Okay, guys, thank you so much, and welcome once again. I am back. This is uh, Stefan Piscato with ListedBuy.com and the Real Estate Networking Group. And, guys, we have got a lot of you on today, and I have to say and acknowledge before we start the actual content you all came to see, I know a good percentage of you that are joining us today saw my uh, depressing email about Stephen Curry and my Warriors, and I do want to say that about 96% of the responses I got were from Cleveland Cavaliers fans. So if you're among those Cavs fans, I am happy for you. You guys deserve it. Uh, your city's definitely been waiting long enough. And so uh, yeah, that was fun to to get some of those comments back. A lot of you guys definitely had some funny stuff to say, and, and I enjoyed it. And, um, you know, hopefully we can all make some money off of the content that we go over today. We can all profit together. And maybe one of us can afford or all of us can afford tickets to next year's NBA Finals. That would be nice. I think they were going for about six grand for a decent seat here in the Bay Area. So um, for those of you that are joining us now and in here at the top, what we're going to do today is we're actually going to look inside and out both sides of a seller finance transaction. This was one that I wanted to do for multiple reasons. So those of you that, that don't know much about my background, I have been an investor and portfolio manager for about 16 years now. Um, I obviously, I do own the largest real estate group on LinkedIn, which is the Real Estate Networking Group. And really what we've built the last five years with listedby.com and the Real Estate Networking Group, initially, after my experience with selling several hundred homes on eBay, I wanted to harness the marketplace functionality of eBay and take it to the real estate sector and basically allow all of us to research and actually physically buy properties online and make the entire process digital, which to date hasn't happened the way I uh, anticipated. But the beautiful thing that did happen is once we started building our free community, especially on LinkedIn, and once we got several hundred thousand members, and now we've got about 1.85 million users in our network, which is just blows me away, I realized that the value that we had to offer to each one of you, and even the value that I get back myself, wasn't so much in the marketplace functionality, but it was in our experiences. It was in our connections. It was in our strategies that work. We're all here for a reason. We're all interested in real estate in one capacity or another. Maybe we're a real estate service provider. Maybe we're an investor. Maybe we're an agent. Maybe we're just passively interested in earning more money for ourselves in retirement or a goal plan, whatever it may be. We all have vast experiences in our lives that we can use to help each other. And so once we started sharing techniques, things that worked, not only our success stories, but also our failures, you know, talking about uh, the downsides of buying property in a certain area or some of the things to be careful about um, when structuring paperwork for a, a a rental lease property or on a higher level investing in private mortgage notes or like we're going to talk about today seller financing and you guys have become so paramount to everything that we do and just trying to provide content that you can really use to be effective and I, I've always been my whole life I've always kind of been anti-guru so to speak I, I'm, and I've got some good friends that are great people that I guess you could put in that category, so I don't want to badmouth all of them, but some of those guys that you see on TV, um, you know, they're talking about things that they think should make sense in real estate, and they've never actually done a real estate deal. There's literally a guy that I'm not going to say his name, but very well known that most of you guys would know that I talked to at one of these events. He's selling a very successful program, and he's literally never done a deal of, in, of his own. So what we like to do is not just connect you with strategies that make sense or should work, but we have to actually connect you with opportunities. And we've literally had, and we did a webinar last year with Janet Turco, one of our members of our network that is now, uh, has a, a, above a million dollar portfolio with her investment strategies. We've had many, many, many millionaires made in our network with the connections that we provide. And sometimes guys, it's just a simple light bulb that goes off. And so if we can be a small part of that light bulb, then that's great. Obviously, you know that a good portion of the webinars we've done have been affiliated with the equity build model or the equity build finance strategy. And the reason we've really liked to highlight the equity build finance model specifically is with all of the research I've done personally in the real estate market, with all the investments I've tried, and I've tried pretty much it all. I've, I've been a hard money lender with my own money. I've been a, a, a bird dog early in my career. I've been a property manager. I've done deals on the commission side. I mean, I've bought notes. I've bought 
one dollar houses in Detroit that I flipped on eBay. I bought million dollar apartment. I've, you know, I've done a lot of things. I have never seen a strategy as stable and consistent as the equity bill finance model. Not even close. Not even any of my own strategies I've done in myself over the years. And and they've got such an amazing ecosystem that if you've been on any of our previous webinars, you already know. They're the only group I'm aware of that had great success in 2005, 2006, the last time the market was booming similar to it is today. And then the key being when the market crashed in a way that maybe was the worst crash economically in the history of our country. Certainly it was in my lifetime. I'm in my mid-30s. Um, they not only survived, they not only stood packed, but they actually pivoted, they expanded their model and became stronger. And now the market's booming again, and they're having extraordinary success. And they've been able to maintain that perfect payment track record going on 1,000-plus transactions, not only over a 10-year period, but again, over a 10-year period that we've had the widest shifts in market history, potentially, at least certainly in the last 100 years. So we want to highlight it from that angle uh, because a lot of you, that even if you've been on some of our webinars we've done for equity bill finance, you might hear private mortgage note investing, but you might not really know what that is and even if you do know what it is let's say you're savvy you might say well you know I'm going to compare that to hard money lending because that's uh, what I think of when I think of lending on notes or you might compare it to note buying you know where you're, you're doing some of these things at the tax deed auctions things like that and that's not what this is and I know when you hear some of the high returns like we're going to talk about because I am going to reveal two properties and two opportunities one on the equity build side that's actually available to purchase with owner financing and I'm going to reveal a private mortgage note opportunity where you can actually invest in the ecosystem the model I'm talking about and get a fixed return and so when you hear returns like 15 percent 16 percent we've had some this year that are 17 18 percent you're probably in your head you're going to compare that to high risk investments because the return so high and that's what you know Adam Gordon the guy who is the uh, national webinar, excuse me, national sales manager for Equity Bill Finance and my most frequent webinar partner, that's what he said to me over the years is that's the most common question they get is the returns seem too good to be true. And they love that question because it gives them an opportunity to look into your perspective and say, well, why do you think that, you know? And most of the time, it's based on our life experiences. It's based on what we're used to. So if I'm somebody that has always invested in CDs and right now you're going to get about 1% maybe 1.25 I think uh, if you do a five-year CD which makes me want to throw up um, or if you're in mutual funds you know I just sat down with my mother-in-law about a month and a half ago and we looked at her mutual funds uh, for a retirement account and over the last 10 years her average return was 2.85 percent less than three percent which does not keep up with inflation which means she's actually losing a significant amount of money if you're somebody like that and that's what you're used to. If you hear 10%, you're going to say, oh, my gosh, that's probably too good to be true. There's something wacky there. Where if you're a hedge fund manager, if you're Blackstone, if you're one of these large institutions that are doing high risk, high reward all the time, they're getting 40%, 60%, 30%. If we go to them with 18%, you know, as Adam says, they're going to tell us to pound sand because it's, it's, not, it's not worth it to them. So what I'm going to do today we're going to start it off, and I just want to add value to you guys because I know we've got a diverse network. A lot of you are very active real estate investors. Some of you aren't. Some of you are learning. Some of you are at different stages. So I want to try to add value to everybody if we can. So I'm going to start off. I want to give you some of my fundamental principles for buying real estate with owner finance. This is just this doesn't have anything to do with equity build. This is just stuff I've done and perfected in my career that we've had a lot of success with. There's a brief video that I want to show there. And then I'm going to take it full circle, and I want to show it from the other side. Just like the slide says, we're going to look at the benefits of seller financing from the other side of the table. Because probably what we're used to thinking about when we think about seller financed opportunities, probably the first thing most of us think about is, is that's something that you would get for the home that you're going to live in. You're probably going to pay a premium. Um, it's probably not going to be an investment. It's just an opportunity for maybe if you've got dinged up credit or you're self-employed or for whatever reason, you can't qualify for traditional bank financing. And because of that being the first thing that probably most of us have in our head when we think about seller financing, I think there's a negative connotation that people associate with it, which in some ways for those of us that know better is great because that um, gives us less competition for what we're trying to achieve. You know, I can't tell you how many times in my career, and like I said, we've bought 
more than 300 property, more than 300 units uh, with owner finance, not equity bill. That's that's Stefan Piscano and my partners and myself over the last 10 years for more than 300 units with owner financing specifically. So I know there's probably some hedge funds out there that have bought more than that. I don't know if there's any individual group like uh, like mine that have bought the number of properties we have all with owner financing. And I can't tell you how many times I've approached the list agent where it wasn't being marketed as seller financing. And I say, hey, what do you want about carrying the paper? The first thought they have is, oh, well, you must not be able to apply or, or to be approved with bank financing. There must be something wrong. Um, and you know, little do they know that we're a multi-million dollar group. Da, 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 da. But it's uh, that's fine. We can use that to our advantage. So I want to talk to you about some of the advantages just for buying owner financing that you probably would never think about. We already talked about the obvious one, which is you're dealing with a human being instead of a bank. So you're able to have the approval process be much easier. Now that's that's one thing to say that. It's another thing to live it. I've got. Uh, my best friend and business partner just bought a new home. I've got my one of my favorite long-term clients, partners, friends of mine just did a refinance last year. I've got my brother just did a ref. You know, all of these people doing new purchases or refis with banks. Oh my gosh! And as somebody that's connected to them, all of the people I just named from one or way or another, a financial aspect, um, having to help them get the paperwork together. Ah, I mean, talk. You want to talk about how depressed I was after Stephen Curry kept missing all, breaking all those threes the other night in Game Seven. I mean, that the paperwork they require is so extensive, and it's gotten so much more um, time-consuming and in in uh, intrusive into our lives than it was even a few years ago. Just with some of the new things that they've done in the last. Uh, two years with some of the regulations they've put on the banks. We'll talk about in a moment how that can benefit you on the lending side as well. But because this process is so intense, and I mean, I'm I'm not even the person getting the loan. I'm just giving out one of these particular. I personally spent about 60 hours of my time trying to help one of the to get the financing, uh, everything the bank needed for them to get approved. So if we think about what our time is worth, the typical seller finance deal. Um, I have seen it on the, as a buyer. I'm just going to tell you the truth. Um, and again, this doesn't have anything to do with equity. This is my personal backstory with this. Um, I've had it many, many times where they literally ask for nothing. <laughs> or uh, um, the most common request is a copy of a credit report and a financial statement that you create. So you pull your own credit report, send that to the list agent. You make an Excel spreadsheet with your finance. You send that over. That's the average. And then the highest level of intensity with a seller financing approval um, that I have seen uh, for myself would be, uh, you know, they pull the credit and, um, you know, you provide some bank statements for income verification, which that actually only happened twice um, where we went, even went to that level. So the time that you're saving as a buyer going from maybe spending 100 hours of your life, literally 100 hours of your your living and breathing on nothing but this, as opposed to maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour and a half, um, what is that worth? What is your time worth? What is your peace of mind worth? That's the obvious. Once we get into the actual transaction, many of you are probably thinking that you have to pay a premium to get seller financing. And actually, that's true. Um, you don't have to, but if you want to get, uh, get good terms, you typically will. What I typically do when I buy a property with seller finance and, and agents, anybody that's worked with me on that side of things has heard me say it, the purchase price is actually the least important thing to me. It's all about the terms. It's all about a cash on cash return. And what I mean by that is I look at how much money am I investing on this deal in cash and how much am I getting back on that investment percentage wise, because that's everything. You know, even I've had to, to explain this to my mother a thousand times when we talked about, oh, well, this condo only generates $600 and this one generates $900, so this one's better. Well, no, you didn't factor in that you've got to put four times as much down on the one that generates $900. There's an HOA. and da, da, da. The only thing that matters is the percentage. And I'll give you an, a real easy formula um, for those of you that don't know, and I'm sure most of you or many of you do, so forgive me if you already know, but the way to calculate a cash-on-cash -cash return Let's say I'm going to buy a building for a million dollars cash. And let's say after all my expenses, whole nine yards, management, I'm netting $100,000 a year 
in net rental proceeds or my NOI, my net operating income on that million dollar building. I invested a million dollars cash. So the way to find out what my cash on cash return is, is to take the NOI and divide it by a million dollars cash, which was my investment. So that's obviously 10%. If I take that same building and I can buy it with owner financing with 10% down, uh, which leads me to my other, my second piece of the benefit of buying with owner financing as opposed to with the banks. The banks right now, especially on commercial property or investment property, a lot of times they're going to want 20, 30, 40% down. That kills your leverage and it kills your cash flow and it kills your cash on cash return. If you can buy with maximum leverage, which typically with an owner finance deal, at least anyone that I would do, um, I'm going to try to get maximum leverage. I'm going to try to buy between 5% down, believe it or not, or to 15%. Rarely in my time of buying have I ever gone above 15%. Maybe 20 if it's just a killer primo property, but usually 10 to 15. Um, and I just had one the other day that I bought with 6% down. That's a $500,000 property. So about $30,000 down. So, but anyway, back to the scenario. So if I'm buying that same building for a million dollars, but now I'm buying it with 10% down with owner financing. So now my investment isn't a million dollars cash anymore. It's a hundred thousand dollars cash. That's all I'm taking out of my savings. That's all I'm investing in the project. My, everything else stays the same. I'm earning the $100,000 net operating income that I was before, but now I've got a loan payment. So my loan payment, let's say it's 5% interest only amortization is what I typically shoot for. Now my loan payment is $45,000 a year because it's 5% interest only amortization on the $900,000 note that I have. So with that, I deduct the $45,000 from my $100,000 net profit and I've got $55,000 left. So why is 55,000 better than 100,000? because I only invested 100K to get it instead of a million dollars. So now I'm earning 55% cash on cash instead of 10. And I can replicate that. If I have a million dollars cash, if I replicate that 10 times, obviously then I'm earning $550,000 a year on my million dollars instead of $100,000. So leverage is key and leverage and cash flow is personally for me always been the foundation for my investment strategy and from a different side of things which we'll go into a little bit equity build has also always used cash flow as the model and that's why um, you know I always I steal this phrase from Sean Cohen who's one of the two founders of equity build because I just love it it's because it, it really crystallizes it and he said if I go out and I buy a building for a million dollars and I'm getting 20 percent cash on cash if the market crashes tomorrow and that same building is worth half of what I just paid for it, I'm happy. And the reason I'm happy is because now I can go buy the building next door that's just like it and I can get 40% cash on cash return. So when you base your strategy on cash flow and leverage, to some extent you're protected from market fluctuation. Obviously there could be some doomsday scenarios that could take place to where people can't pay their rent, so on and so forth, when you talk about that. But for the large part, even when the market crashed like we'd never seen it before in 2008, 2009, rental flow stayed pretty much the same. And so you saw cash on cash returns just skyrocket. So forgive me, guys, there's going to be a little bit of redundancy here. I want to play for you. Actually, this was my first video, really, of any kind that I, uh, that I ever did before we started doing any of these webinars. So. Uh, this was about six years ago when I we actually first really heavily started buying um, owner financed uh, properties and using leverage. I think it is really relevant to what we're talking about today. It's about five minutes long. I'm going to play this for you. It basically runs through a lot of the same things I just touched on. So again, forgive me about the redundancy, but it does put it in black and white with some direct examples of what I'm talking about. So you'll be able to see firsthand and then we're going to dive into the fun stuff because I'm going to look at seller financing from the other side and I'm going to show you the huge benefits of being a lender becoming the bank. So we'll play this brief video and then I'll be right back with you and uh, we'll keep it rocking here. Okay, so we're going to give a brief rundown on the new Wealth Partner Multifamily Property Fund. Uh, this is an excellent fund that we've introduced to help bring our investors together in order to acquire income producing properties that will cash flow on terms. 
So we're going to start by giving a brief rundown. The example property we're going to use is actually a real property that we recently acquired with the program. Uh, this is a 10-unit property in Reno, Nevada, 5,000 square feet, 100% occupied. This is your NOI. Your NOI stands for net operating income. And basically what that is is that's your monthly rent proceeds minus your monthly expenses times 12. And so with this particular property, your net operating income after all expenses to maintain the property is $42,000 a year. So the purchase price on this property was $395,000, which gives us a cap rate of 10.8%. The way you get your capitalization rate is you take your net operating income, your NOI, so in this case, $42,000, and you divide that by your purchase price. So effectively, if you were going to buy this property cash for $395,000, uh, when factoring in your $42,000 annual net operating income, you would be earning 10.8% cash on cash return on your investment of $395,000 cash. So now we're going to look at how that percentage changes when you're able to acquire the property with a low down payment on terms. So you can see for this property, the asking price, 395, owner carry terms, $45,000 down, 6% interest rate for a five-year loan term. So now that's amortized over 30 years, but that means that the seller is willing to carry paper and finance the property without a bank for a five-year period before a balloon payment is due. As many of us know, the commercial lending market is near impossible to get quality terms with a low down payment right now because of the financial markets being what they are. So if you're able to acquire property with a seller carry with a low down payment in that 10% range like this, uh, it's an exceptional buy and that's what we typically shoot for to make this strategy really work. So okay, so we've got our terms there. So if we put $45,000 down, our financed amount is going to be $350,000 with our $395 purchase price. So at 6%, that would be a $2,100 payment to your lender every month. Okay. So to find out what our new NOI is, we're going to take our annual debt service, our payments, and we're going to deduct that from our $42,000 NOI. So in this case, our annual expenses as far as the payments to the lender is going to be $25,200. We're going to deduct that from $42,000, and that leaves us with a $16,800 net operating income. So now, to get our new cash on cash return on investment, you're going to divide your net operating income by your total cash investment. Now, in this scenario, you're not investing $395,000 cash anymore. Now, all you're investing is this $45,000 down payment. And since the property is cash flowing and makes the monthly payments and then some on its own, that's the only investment that you ever make for the lifetime of the property. So, we take your $16,800 NOI, divide that by your $45,000 total cash investment, and that equals a 37.2% cash on cash return. So you can see, as opposed to up here, we have a 10.8 cap rate, cash on cash return. Now, by purchasing the property with $45,000 down, roughly a little more than 10%, we're able to more than triple our cash on cash return. Okay, guys, I don't want to bore you too much with that because, like I said, it's a little bit redundant, but I know actually a lot of you were asking if we could see some uh, some slides or some in-writing content with calculating a cash-on-cash cash return, so that does give you that there. And then also, I just posted in the chat box, for those of you that are more visual and like to see some of this in black and white, you can read the article for LinkedIn Pulse that I wrote a couple of months back called If the Market Crashes, I'm Happy, and that's, of course, piggybacking um, off of that same phrase that Sean Cohen that I've stolen from him <laughs> that uh, that basically walks through the benefits of basing your strategy on cash flow and how that really does protect you from market fluctuation. Because honestly, guys, you know, I started in this when I was really younger because I've always been upset, but I officially started in this when I was 19 years old. And all of my mentors, um, some of whom were very successful, some of whom 
have uh, went bankrupt in the crash. Some of them uh, still are. Um, and I'm proud to say that the team at Equity Build Finance, I would consider them my some mentors of mine as well because I've learned a lot from them the last four years um, as an investor and, and working in the capacity we do. But the ones that have been the most successful, that have taught me the most, all stayed away from being dependent on market fluctuation. And even one of my first mentors who was worth $50, $60 million at the peak of the market and did go bankrupt, um, he, who is still a, a great friend of mine and very close, um, he is part of what helped me develop this strategy for buying with owner finance too because after the bankruptcy, um, you know, his credit was so bad he couldn't get a gas card, but he still had several hundred thousand dollars and he didn't want to have to buy everything cash. So there's a lot of benefits to this, but what I saw happen to him is that he got so focused on riding the appreciation wave that he got overextended and, and obviously bad things happen and, and he's among millions of us that had something similar happen when the crash hit. Again, the only group that I personally am aware of that did not have any hardship and not only didn't have any hardship but actually expanded and got stronger um, during the crash and beyond is equity build finance and that's because of some of the reasons I'm about to walk through here. But that taught me what I've seen is I don't want to be a slave to the market. I've never been a flip guy. Uh, you know, the only time I've ever done flips is when it's extraordinarily short term. I'm talking, I'm selling it the next day. And the margins are so wide and so deep that it just doesn't, uh, it's just a no brainer. And even then, it's not my cup of tea. The tax benefits aren't as strong when you're flipping that short. Um, the market fluctuation can always go any which way or another. I'm a cash flow guy. I'm a stability guy. And that's why I've been so drawn to equity build in their model um, over the last few years as well. Because, again, I've never seen one that has that combination of the high returns and the stability. One last thing I do want to tell you that's key on the owner financing side as a buyer before we get into some pieces on the seller. This is a real hidden benefit that even I didn't know until we started doing it. So obviously we talked about when you're dealing with a human being as opposed to the banks. And those of you that know me personally and really all the webinars we've done, they kind of have a theme of taking the control back for yourself and taking it away from the big financial institutions and the banks. You know, Sean Cohen is right in line with my way of thinking with that. He calls it the shroud of ignorance that some of these large financial institutions put over all of us that we just blindly throw our money in. We don't ask any questions. If we do ask any questions, we're penalized for it. And most of us not only don't know which companies we're invested in in the stock market, we don't even know what return we're getting. That's the reality. If we're really honest with ourselves, and we did a poll on it in a webinar last year called Making the Grade, 70% of the people on that call said they had not evaluated their stock and mutual portfolios, mutual fund portfolios, um, to find out what their actual net return was. And that's pretty crazy, guys, because if we really think about it, what's more important than our financial future? Obviously, our health, our families. But financial freedom and the ability to live the way we want, not only right now, but in retirement, is so critical. And so if I can help to show people how the opportunities are there to maybe make a 16% return or 12% return instead of a 2 or a 4 or a negative, um, or those of us that are doing nothing and getting zero, and gets with inflation, that's a life-changing opportunity. That's the difference in tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars in your retirement. And it, it really is important to me, and it's important to the Equity Build team as well. Anyway, I got sidetracked, as I tend to do. The last bit of it I want to tell you on the buyer's side, when you're dealing with a human being, we pay a premium on the purchase price. By we, I mean myself, my investors, not Equity Build. Ne Equity Build actually buys all of their stuff well, well below market value and then resells it. I, whenever I buy property, I always would go in with the owner finance and say, hey, um, you know, and the prototypical person I would buy from would be someone that doesn't need all the money right now, usually a retiree, they're well off, they're selling the property, uh, maybe they wanted to get more than what it's worth, and it's been sitting for a while. I'll say, I'll pay you full price. I'll even pay more than full price sometimes, but I want to buy with maximum leverage, and I want good long-term uh, interest rate and terms, and we negotiate based off of that. So I'm paying, in some cases, more than what it's worth right then to get favorable terms, which you might not like that. A lot of people don't. But here's the key. On the back end, I'm going to give you an example. I bought a property in Pollock Pines, California in 2013 for $150,000. Um, this is right by Tahoe. I bought it for $150,000 2013. 
I put $18,000 down on it. So I owed 132. I got a 4% interest rate. I spent $20,000 rehabbing the property. So total I was into it for $38,000. Um, two years later, early 2015, I sold that property for $230,000. So I was already going to make a nice profit um, because the market had just appreciated so much. And quite frankly, I was tired of driving out there all the time. <laughs> but uh, I, was gonna, I was already going to make a nice profit. But I went back to the seller that had the lien on my property. And I said, hey, we've got six years remaining on this note. Um, if we paid it off early, would you take a reduced payoff? He said, what did you have in mind? I said, well, we owe you $132,000. How about $100,000 even? And I thought that would be a starting point. We'd go back and forth a little bit. My surprise, he agreed. He just said yes. So that's an extra $32,000 in profit on the back end of the transaction, which effectively reduced my purchase price by $32,000. We all couldn't believe that's the, the most successful order. Since then, every time I've sold an owner finance property, I always ask that, and any of you that buy, I always recommend you do it too if you're paying off early. And I've always gotten at least some reduction. Maybe it's five grand tinker, but it's just extra money in your pocket. And that's another opportunity that doesn't even remotely exist with a bank. You wouldn't even be able to get on the phone with a person that had the authority to make that decision with a bank, let alone actually get it to work. So there's the, uh, I could talk with you for six days about the benefits of dealing with human beings and taking yourself out of the financial institution uh, marketplace and the nonsense that they put and the control that they put on your money. It's your money. That's the thing. I feel like a lot of us, especially with our retirement accounts, we don't even really realize that it's our money, but it is, and we should be able to invest it how we choose. So um, so that's the hidden benefit there. I'm going to get into the other side of things now. I've talked about it from the perspective of the buyers. Uh, now I want to talk about how it can benefit you to be the bank, because that's a lot more stable. Um, a lot of people that don't do this for a living, you don't want to be driving out to Pollock Pines three times a week, I can assure you. You don't want to be going to Detroit every other day to deal with your problem. You just want a return. You want stable cash flow. And there's ways to do that. So as you can see, my number one reason here why it pays to actually be the bank, traditional banks are being restricted from the lending opportunities that they can do. We've talked about that a lot already. I've talked to you both in the video. It was true in 2011 when I made that first video. And it's more true today about the blood, sweat, and tears that goes into getting any type of financing. What that means is there's more proper, more availability and more opportunity for private lending than there has ever been, in my opinion, at any point in our history. And that's because people don't want to do, people are smart. You know, they don't give us credit. They don't give us the credit to the, allow us to think for ourselves. They think they can put whatever regulation on us. They can make us go through the TSA for four and a half hours. They can make us all herd like cattle to wherever they want us to go. And we're just going to say, yes, thank you. That's fantastic. Can I have some more? And it doesn't really work that way. We've so, shown uh, over hundreds of years that we're, we're a resilient society. Uh, that's what this country was founded on, a taxation without representation, so on and so forth. And we will figure something out. And what we've figured out, to some extent, is private lending opportunities. If we can't get financing the traditional way with the banks with ease that we're used to, then investors that have hot deals, have opportunities that want to get these great returns, they're going to seek it elsewhere, and individuals are going to fill that role. And because of that, and there's so much competition and uh, so much demand, it allows an institution like an equity bill finance to be able to actually fund these loans with more stability and with higher interest rates than we would have seen in the past. Even though the interest rates are low that we're earning with the banks, we can actually get higher returns lending money right now than we could a few years ago because people have nowhere else to go. If you're an investor, especially those of us in the real estate, so you guys know, and I know a lot of you on this call are, if you're an investor, it, it's, it's hard. You could make half a million dollars a year um, but because of being self-employed and the way the commissions come in and your tax filings, oh my gosh, it can be a real pain to prove your income and to show that you are who you are from a buying perspective. And if you're in that category, you're going to go towards private lending because you still have access to cash flow. Just like my mentor, who was worth $60 million, filed bankruptcy, still was a millionaire, um, technically. 
um, but he had horrible credit. So where is he going to go? He's going to go because he still wants to, to have the same access to opportunity. He still knows what he's doing. He can still make money. He's going to go somewhere. He's going to go to a private lender. So that's the first thing. Earning high returns with today's rates, we talked about this a little bit already with the banks, the way things are set up, is effectively impossible. Um, I'm not sure, you know, we do know why that they have to keep the rates as low as they are because if the Fed raised the rates, which it looks like they're actually going to hold off on doing for another year or two here, if they raise the rates, then that would almost certainly cause the market to either crash or dip. It would have a negative impact. So they have to keep rates low where they are. You know, uh, as you can see, um, my little note here, and I've talked about this a little bit already, if you're investing in a CD, if you have your money, oh, if you have your money in a savings account, forget about it. If you're, I mean, and, and forget about a CD too. I had my mom call me last summer and she said, I think I want to put some money in a CD. And uh, my eyeballs popped out of my head. I said, what are you, and, uh, and she said, well, I think I should be able to get like five or 6%. That'd be nice. And I said, mom, I said, I don't know if you've looked at the CDs in the last 15 years, but you're not going to get five or six. But we looked it up. This was this was probably seven, eight months ago, actually. Um, and at that time, the highest CD for a five-year CD was 1.15%. It was some online bank that nobody had ever heard of. So probably not the most stable thing. You certainly wouldn't put a lot of money there. Even if you did, why would you want to put that much money in something that's not keeping up with inflation? I was thinking... I. I'm getting soft time, but you guys are fun, and I, I appreciate you. I think you guys are um, hopefully interested in the same stuff I am to some extent, so hopefully you enjoy this stuff. But I was watching the O.J. Simpson uh, documentary the other day, and uh, they were talking about where he lived in Brentwood, California, such an amazing neighborhood. And so, oh, this is a country club, and it's so fantastic, and it's so exclusive, all these mansions. And they couldn't believe you know, he was he was there and all that. And one thing that jumped out at me that maybe not a lot of people noticed, when they showed a newspaper clipping in that article, they showed what O.J. Simpson paid for his house. And it says, O.J. Simpson moves to Brentwood, I think it was 1989. He bought his mansion in this amazing country club neighborhood, Southern California, for $500,000. $500,000. Today, that house is, I mean, it's torn down. But today, a house like that, in that neighborhood, you're probably paying $10 million. So that's not because the market has gone up so much since then to where it goes from 500000 to $10 million. That's part of it. But it's the dollar's worth less. Inflation is real, guys. That blew me away when I saw 500000 for a mansion in Brentwood. Oh, my gosh. Because, you know, we don't think of that as that long ago. I mean, it was 20 years ago, 25 years ago. But still, think about what we could get a beautiful home for in 1989 or 1996 and what that same home would cost today. Inflation always happens. And real estate is one of the few inflation hedges that we can get as evidenced by the O.J. Simpson house being worth 500,000 and today probably worth 10, 15 million in that same neighborhood um, that not only protects us from inflation and keeps up with inflation just by its own existence, by its supply and demand of everyone always needing housing, always needing a place to live, but it generates cash flow. It generates tax write-offs. It uh, generates income. If you're talking about the equity bill finance strategy, and this is key back to what I've been talking about today a lot, which is taking control of your financial future, a self-directed IRA. If you have not heard of a self-directed IRA, please Google it right now. Talk to someone about it. If, you, if you'd like my help, we, have, uh, we did a webinar with one of the top minds in the country for self-directed IRAs. His name was Jay Goldblatt a couple of months ago. Really nice guy, great educator, great person. I'd be happy to recommend you to him. But anybody that you work with to take your money back, the way that works, you can take a self-directed IRA and you can invest the money in your IRA as you see fit in whatever you want, precious metals, oil stock, Apple stock, real estate, rental properties, private mortgage notes, and I got to tell you, for a self-directed IRA, for retirement planning in general, the equity build finance model to me makes more sense than anything else because, again, it's been effectively a guaranteed return. It's been a guaranteed return for more than a thousand deals because they've always paid every time for more than a decade, more than a thousand deals through all the chaos and the shifts and the nonsense in the market that we've seen. And 
when we think about guaranteed returns, we think about a CD, we think about a savings account, we think about maybe an insurance annuity. Even with an insurance annuity that's effectively guaranteed, you're going to get 4 or 5%. The difference between 4% or 2.8%, like my mother-in-law's average with her mutual fund over the last decade, and 16%, Oh my gosh, think about that. Think of if you're earning, let's say you've got $300,000 in your retirement account, $200,000 in your retirement. If you're earning an extra 14% a year for the next 10 years when you get ready to retire, oh my gosh, it, that's a difference in the type of house you're going to be living in or if you're going to have a house. That's a difference in the vacations you can take with your grandkids or your children. That's a difference in the kind of car you're driving if that's your thing. And that's a difference if you're going to go to an NBA Finals game with me when... Anyway, I will get, but it, you get the idea. So, I mean, it's, it's a huge, huge lifestyle change in there. That's why I'm so passionate about it. And quite frankly, I believe it 100% with every fiber that I am. There's no opportunity that has the combination of high returns and stability the way the equity bill finance model does. But if you don't agree, if it's not a good fit for you, or if they think it's not a good fit, because not everybody fits into the same mold and you shouldn't, then I don't care. You should still have control of your assets. I'd always hope that we would all bet on ourselves before we would bet on some mutual fund manager that we've never met that doesn't care about us and half the time or more than half the time is investing in other mutual funds and it goes so many levels deep, the own fund manager honestly doesn't have a clue what actual companies he's investing our money in. And that's why I've completely taken myself out of the stock market. Um, I had one remaining little ten thousand uh, dollar college savings fund for my four-year-old son that I had with T. Rowe Price earlier this year when the market dipped six and a half percent the first six weeks of 2016 and I called him up I called the 800 number and I said hey I said I just um, was wondering you know I said I personally think the market's going to continue to dip here the stock market and I'd like to uh, be out of it for a little while and be able to come back in I said do you have a money market I could put my my funds into and then wait and come back in when it's low it was my thought and he said well yeah we do it's kind of like a money market he said it's a and I said what does that pay and he said well it's a 0, 0.0 return <laughs> and uh, there's some fees so it actually ends up being slightly less than zero percent I was oh okay well I said well that's <laughs> that's nice but I said I guess that's pretty depressing but at least it's it's probably you know guaranteed right and he said well Technically, no. <laughs> Technically, it's not guaranteed. We can't, you know, he said there's things, but he said and it's pretty much, it's it's pretty stable at 0%. But it, so I, I, when I heard that, I just said, well, give me my money back. I know I, I took that out too. So uh, now I'm completely out of the stock market. And honestly, guys, when we talk about lending on a note, and I'm going to take it back to brass tacks here. For those of you that don't know, and I'm assuming a lot of you do, that's probably a silly assumption because we got a lot of you on here, and it's probably some of your first time with our webinars. For those of you that don't know how the equity bill mo model works, I'm going to take it down to its core. So Jerry Cohen, um, one of the, the key founders of Equity Build, was an extremely successful investor in the 1980s, and he actually personally owned more than 500 units um, at one point in the late 1980s. And he based his strategy on uh, a lot of the things we're talking about today, cash flow, there's a proprietary model, and he had amazing success, obviously. Um, he got his son, Sean Cohen, one of the other founders, interested in real estate at a very early age. He actually had him managing uh, 10 units at the age of 12, 13. So when other kids were out riding bikes or eating dirt or whatever, Sean was learning how to calculate cap rates. He was learning how to do a lot of things we're talking about today. He became obsessed with it. Um, Sean later went on to, to be a PhD candidate in economics. Brilliant guy, George Mason. Um, and, and really, their careers individually combined in 2005 when Sean came to, to his father and said, hey, let's take what we've been able to do for ourselves and our friends and family members, let's take that to the masses, let's create a turnkey experience and allow people to be able to piggyback on our decades of combined experience in real estate investing and allow them to have that same stability and success that we have because of our hard work um, in a partnership format so that people, if you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're you know, a psychologist, you're a contractor, you're a cab driver, whatever you, you do, you can focus on how you make your money, what you're comfortable with, what your passions are, 
whether it's your work, your family, more time at the gym, whatever it is, and let us take care of the real estate side of things and just get you all of the results and the return. And they did that with Equity Build and started selling turnkey properties where you could buy these, uh, these homes or these apartment buildings with owner financing, uh, seller financing rather, and get those returns. Equity Build handles all the management, they handle the tennis payment, the rehab, whole nine yards. Then when the market crashed in 2009, there was a problem and that was that the bank stopped lending completely, you know, and we've talked about it before. I had uh, one of my good friends and I count him as a mentor in different capacity at that time was in the uh, hospitality and he did large furniture developments for uh, real estate developments when MGM Grand places like that in Las Vegas, so on and so forth. When the market crashed, all of his seven projects or eight projects he had going in Las Vegas all called the same day and said, we're putting a stop, we're canceling the order, we can't do anything, we don't have any, the banks aren't lending, we're cutting it all off. So it was chaotic. Equity Build then pivoted, said we've got to create our own funding source or else nobody's going to be able to buy our properties. And that's when Equity Build Finance was born. Equity Build Finance, when you invest with Equity Build Finance, you're investing in a first position note. And so you have, you personally, and it's recorded in your personal name, every one of the lenders, you can have up to 100 lenders on one note. I don't think they normally have more than 10 or 15 at the most, sometimes a lot less than that. On one note, all have a first position lien secured on this specific property that you're investing on that's within the Equity Build model. Then Equity Build is selling that to one of their thousands of pre-approved and vetted buyers uh, for a short-term bridge loan, usually 12 to 24 months to stabilize the property, get the tenants in place, uh, a lot of times they're already in place, raise the rents, and then cash out with bank financing with the relationships that Equity Build Finance has because they've got some of the top um, you know, ex-banker types on their staff, they've got the contacts, they're able to get those traditional financing approved on the back end, sell at a higher profit, and meanwhile, for the 12 to 24 months, you as a lender have gotten those high returns for the short-term bridge loan from the, anywhere from 12 all the way up to 18%. And it's key to note that you're in first position. Really key to note, guys, because a lot of people, again, when you hear 18%, 15%, you might associate those with being in second position or second position notes. Um, to me, that's one of the few things I've never done. I've never invested in a second position note. I never would. I don't really know the point because you've got so many people ahead of you. You're basically just, it's all, might as well be an unsecured loan. You're basically just giving that person money saying, please pay me back. <laughs> because, and you get a higher return sometimes if it works, but uh, the success rate is not worth it to me, especially when I could go and be in first position with the equity of finance. And, and guys, part of the reason why they've never had a foreclosure and they've had a perfect payment track record going on a thousand transactions now is the way they structure their paperwork. Their paperwork is brilliant. And they've got in this ecosystem where they're controlling every aspect of the process from the property acquisition. They only lend on equity build properties. Uh, we get asked that a lot. Can they give me money in Miami? Can they give me money in Dallas, Texas? The answer is no, because it has to be in this ecosystem. And the reason it has to be in this ecosystem is that's what creates the stability. They handle the rehab, they handle the lender, they handle the buyer. They're every piece and they have a vested interest in making sure those payments get made. And if anything does go wrong, which has only been two times in the last 10 years where something has gone, that's where one time the buyer of one of these properties didn't tell his wife about it and she found out and said it's, it's either me or the property and he wisely chose his wife. And... Uh, and then Equity Build had to take that property back. But because they've got the huge ecosystem they do, that wasn't a problem because they already have 15 other, you know, A paper borrowers waiting to buy the same property. So they just put someone else in and all of the lien holders still get paid. Everyone still gets secured, gets the high return. So that's a key notion there as well. Um, one thing, and it kind of goes along that same line with the reason number four that I have here, Equity Build Finance has the access to these deals because they have their footprint in Chicago specifically and it could be it could have been any market it could have been New York or where it could be they specifically spent years selecting Chicago because of the rare combination that it has and there's a webinar we did about a month ago now called why Chicago where we talked about some of those reasons why they honed in on there but it had the rare combination of cash flow appreciation 
um, an entry point that allowed them to really get in and dominate this specific neighborhood in Chicago. So I can tell you guys, they get deals that never see the light of day. They've got people, asset managers, bird are calling them with deals way below current market value that they are purchasing quickly, securing, putting them into their process so that there's so much room there that they're actually able to lend, give leverage to the end buyer, and make a huge profit on the back end and still have enough stability there because it's based on cash flow like we talked about earlier. So it's a scenario to where you really can't replicate it. And that's why, again, I'm really thankful to partner with them. I'm thankful that we get to do what we do and share these opportunities with everyone in my network because we couldn't build that, guys. I mean, we could, but it, it takes us to our mission statement of allowing all of you in my network the opportunity not only to hear this stuff, but to actually be a part of it, participate in it, and piggyback on what they've built. And we walk in as one person We've got maybe we got a fifty thousand to invest, five hundred thousand to invest, hundred that whatever we've got to invest, we invest that, and we have the same purchasing power now of a hundred million dollar outfit because I think this year Equitable Finance now has more than a hundred million dollars invested on the lending side of their business, which is a huge milestone, and that shows the consistency and the stability they've been able to have. So we can piggyback off of that infrastructure, not only to get the best deals but to get the best service from the contractors, the property managers, they want to keep them happy. And so that's a key piece of the puzzle, and that's why I love to be able to share those opportunities with you, because even if we have $2 million ourselves, or $5 million or seven, we're very successful, it takes years to build the relationships and the purchasing power that they have in that given market, so we can all piggyback on that and get that instantaneously, which I think is great. Um, the other thing that's great about investing in notes this money comes to you monthly. I always call it mailbox money, you know, because you just, you know, you don't have to think about it. It is what it is. I mean, you invest. We had Janet Turco, like I said earlier on, on a webinar last year. We highlighted her. She started with a $40,000 test investment with Equity Bill Finance about three and a half, four years ago. It's four years ago now. And uh, she made other investments along the way, obviously. But today, her portfolio with Equity Bill is more than a million dollars. Uh, and she gets a 16% return, so she's making $160,000 a year on her retirement, so she's getting checks every month. That's paid out monthly. So she's getting, what, about uh, $13,000 a month, $13,000, $14,000 a month in cash flow while maintaining her principal. So she's able to live a very nice life in her retirement, and she's not having to worry about her principal in any capacity. And that's what I love about, too, with Equity Build and more specifically, Equity Build Finance on the note side of things, because if you buy the property on the Equity Build side thing, it, it, you still have, even though they're managing every aspect, you still have some aspects of, of ownership there and things that come with that. But if you're investing on the Equity Build Finance side, it is so passive. It is it's so hands-off if you want it to be um, that you really can have that flexibility, not only with your cash flow, but with your life. And if we think about it, if we went out and we buy an investment property, we buy a rental property, if a life situation happens and we need that money, we have to wait to find an agent. We have to list it. We have to wait for it to get an offer. We have to wait to close escrow. It could be six to 12 months before we actually get our money, and then we got to pay a commission on it. With Equity Bill, we maintain our principal. We're earning a high return. We've got the amazing... Uh, guaranteed track record to this point on a thousand deals um, and we get monthly cash flow and we've got easier access to our capital in the event of a life situation occurring and that's such a key piece guys and I always say you know you can't have it be hands off like that they don't necessarily want that quite frankly <laughs> it's up to whatever you want um, but for them they're really all about education they're really all about you not just getting a high return, but you understanding why you're getting that high return and you being a part of that process. You know, that's really something that that goes far beyond just money and it goes far beyond making a profit is their mission statement like ours is to create self-aware investors. And I know they believe this stuff. I mean, I know that they do because I've talked with them about it on a personal level. You know, I was in uh, Sean Cohen lives in Plano, Texas. I was down there last year and I was talking with him. I said, you know, have you ever thought about being structured like a REIT, you know, like a real estate investment trust? 
you know, because you could probably, quite frankly, raise a lot more money that way, and it'd probably be easier for you and quicker as well. And he said, we do not want to be structured in that capacity, and we're vehemently against that structure because a REIT or mortgage pool is effectively the same thing that we're striving against, which is these the shroud of ignorance, as he calls it, which is just blindly putting our money as a society into a fund or a mortgage pool or whatever it may be, the stock market, and closing our eyes and seeing what happens. They want you to be involved. They want you to have specific ownership or a specific hold on a property and be engaged with that property. They want you to be able to see why you're making the great return. They, the reason we're doing this webinar right now and the reason that they do all the webinars that they do and we do together is because of creating education and showing you and answering your questions and taking the feedback that we've been given and trying to say, okay, what do you want? And that was one of the things that on the Janet Turka webinar, I don't want to name drop her too many times here, but that was one of the things that was so key about her webinar is she gave feedback and it was carried out. And, and she got to see things that she specifically uh, recommended to this $100 million company being executed promptly and changing the whole business model in some aspects to what the customer asked for. You know, we had a lot of people ask us on some of the hot property webinars we've done, explain this, explain that. We had a lot of people ask for this webinar. And so we want to give you what you want. Um, and not just what you want, but we want to get you what you can profit from. So I am going to put the contact information up on the screen here for Equity Bill. Um, that number is, as you can see, is 877-978-1869. That's 1-877-978-1869. Um, you can also email invest at equitybuildfinance.com. And that goes directly to Adam Gordon, who's the national sales manager there. And, and guys, I do highly, highly recommend that you make that call, regardless of if you're looking to invest in this particular time or not. Reason being, the number one thing that I always talk about in every webinar I do, and I talk about it with my life, myself, I talk about it with my family all the time, is have a plan. Know what you're trying to achieve in the big picture and on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's, it sounds simple, of course, oh, yeah, everybody knows what they want. But yeah, do we? You know, it, it's, it's amazing how few of us, and myself, and that's why I always have to remind myself, because it's easy to get caught up in day-to-day -day life, taking the kids to school, we're working, we're working out, we're traveling, whatever we're doing, and to not think about the big picture. But if we can at least every once in a while, once a month, once a year, once every six months, reassess okay, we're trying to get to a million dollars in retirement, we want to live here, we want to see the kids, this is whatever it is, and then create a pathway to that. And that's something that the consultants can help you do because they're not salespeople. They're in no way trying to sell anyone anything. It's about consulting with you, about what your goals are, seeing if there's a fit there, an opportunity, and educating. That's the number one thing is about education, creating self-aware investors. And again, you're not talking to salespeople. You're talking to people that are actual real-life investors, uh, pretty much all of which have invested in the model that they're talking with you about. So there's a lot of value there. Uh, I'll give that one more time, and then we'll, we'll hop into some, some live Q&A here. Um, and so that's 877-978-1869. One thing I will tell you, too, the opportunity that they have going right now, um, everyone that's on this webinar, if you did have an opportunity on the Equity Bill Finance side that you wanted to invest in that was a good fit for you, mention that you were on this webinar today um, and you actually get an extra half point bonus. So if you were going to earn 15%, you earn 15.5%. So, hey, you know, you might, uh, that might be worth $500 to you, it might be worth a few thousand dollars, depending on how much you would invest. Um, Obviously, you're not going to invest because of that, but if it was a good fit and it made sense for your life anyway, then I just want to make sure that that is something special that all of you, uh, just as a way to say thank you for taking the time and being on this webinar, that you will get um, if you do mention that as well. So um, I am going to jump into some questions here, guys, and, uh, and you guys rock. I've had a bunch of great ones coming in here throughout and this normally when I do these webinars there's somebody else on here with me this is one of the rare times when it's just me 
<laughs> so I appreciate you. Uh, those of you that stuck through start to finish, you should get some kind of, you should get 2% bonus, I think, for dealing with me. But um, let me look at the questions that you guys have here, see what we've got. Um, okay, let's see. Rich asked, are cap rates highly inflated in this market? It's a really good question, actually, Rich. So, you know, the cap rates actually are not. Right now what's happening is cap rates are actually compressing because what happens when the market goes up like it is is the, the obviously the prices of the properties go up. And so what happens when the price of the properties go up, the rents go up to some extent as well, and that's where a little bit of the inflation game comes into play. Because uh, obviously, you know, not only was a $500,000 mansion in Brentwood in 1989 a lot cheaper than what that would be today, but you could probably rent a place a lot cheaper in 1989 than you could today as well. But if you do the math, it's nowhere near as much of a gap in the rents as it is in the prices of the home. So um, what happens when the market's going up like it is right now is the rents are going up, but they're not going up at the same pace. So the cap rates actually go down and compress and you're seeing a, a smaller NOI um, on the cash flow side than you would normally see. That's okay because if you've adapted for that with the equity bill finance model, you're actually able to capitalize on the appreciation side of things um, with that supply and demand that we talked about with the lack of lending that's going on in the market right now and still charge a higher interest rate on the lending side, if that makes any sense at all. But to the short answer to your question, Rich, is that cap rates are actually going down um, and, and compressing to some extent. Um, let's see. Okay, what else have we got? What is the minimum investment amount accepted for equity or finance? That was asked by Sydney. Great question, Sydney, and a common one. Um, the answer to that is $50,000. However, um, if you are interested in the equity bill finance side and you don't have $50,000, there are a couple of other things that can be done um, that you can pair with someone else to hit the $50,000 minimum. Uh, or sometimes if you go on the equity build side, there will be opportunities there for less than $50,000. And a lot of people actually started on the equity build side, had some success, and work their way up to be able to invest on the equity bill finance side, I, or vice versa. Quite frankly, there's no right or wrong. It's just there's differences, and that's why that conversation is so valuable that we uh, talked about as well. Um, okay, question here from Akraf, who said, uh, and forgive me if I'm pronouncing it wrong, my friend. People butcher Stefan all the time. I hear Stephen and Stefan, so forgive me if that's wrong. He said, do you do private money lending? And uh, the answer to that is no. Uh, well, it's yes and no. Equity bill finance is in some ways acting as private money lender, but only on deals within the equity bill system. So they're not lending on outside properties. And that's key too, guys, because as someone who has been a private money lender myself with my own money back in 2010, 2011, you know, a lot of times, and I wasn't in this boat, but a lot of times the lenders are actually hoping that you fail. They want the payments not to be made because they make a higher profit margin if they actually foreclose, take the property back and sell it. Equity Build Finance is the only lending institution I've ever seen that has the ecosystem in place, like I talked about, to where they're actually incentivized not only to have the payments be made, but to have it be completely successful the whole way throughout and get refinanced to cash everyone out. So. That's why you've seen them have, because they're not a traditional private money lender, they're lending in their own ecosystem with Equity Build and the companies connected to each other, that's why you've seen them have the perfect payment tracker that they have on the 1,000 deals uh, that they have seen. Okay, so let's see, one more question from Mike. Mike said, how can I get a pro forma um, on the property? And Mike, that's a great question as well, and I actually normally would have mentioned that at the top, but I got so excited with all this other stuff going on that I didn't. So good question. All of you will be emailed a uh, pro forma and a copy of the property that is available um, as well. So guys, I, I just want to thank you so much. This has been, for me, uh, I hope it was for you too, one of the most fun webinars we've ever done. I really enjoy spending time with you guys today. I feel like we got to kind of vibe on a lot of different topics. Um, one last present for you, 
And one last request I have humbly, there is going to be a four question survey that's going to pop up on your screen. It should take about 60 to 90 seconds for you to fill out. If you fill out that survey as well, in addition to the other half point bonus I mentioned, um, you will get another half point bonus if you do invest with equity build uh, finance on a property within the next you know, month or so here. It's not a hard deadline. Um, so if you do that, number one, obviously you're not doing that just because you want to get the half a point bonus. The most important thing is your opinion is paramount to everything that I do, that we do. We want to make sure you enjoyed this and we want to know what you'd like to see in the future. So that's the most important thing. Secondly, beyond that, if it does fit your criteria and you end up investing, then you will make anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand dollars more. So again, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for being with us. You're going to see that survey pop up on your screen right now. And I really hope to see you on another webinar soon.